Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sam Hoggart, Chancellor of UCSF. It is my great pleasure to be here with you all this afternoon and to welcome you to our very first virtual Founders Day Award celebration. This event is one of UCSF's greatest traditions, a wonderful time for us all to gather together and recognize our outstanding community, to reflect on some of our remarkable accomplishments and acknowledge some of the exemplary individuals who helped make UCSF an incredible place. Yes, I know we're in challenging times and we cannot forget the toll the new normal has taken on us, our families and our community. But I am so proud of who we are at UCSF. And it is of little surprise, at least to me, that our response to these challenges has been extraordinary. Not only is UCSF known for our outstanding research, education, and clinical care, but we are all part of an inspiring community of individuals who are committed to improving the lives of others. And these times that we now live in, and we have responded to, shows once again what makes this institution so special. I thank each of you who are listening this afternoon for your dedication, your spirit, and your hard work, all of which make up the very fabric of UCSF. So now it's my honor to recognize 13 members of our university who will be receiving awards in the areas of exceptional service, outstanding contributions to our community, and excellence in nursing. I'll begin this afternoon with the presentation of the Chancellor Award for Public Service. This year's recipients are in the faculty and staff categories. This award was established in 1970 by then Chancellor Philip R. Lee to honor members of the campus community who have performed outstanding service to the community at large, above and beyond what was required by their university's positions. Public service has always been an integral part of the DNA at UCSF, and it's an area that we recognize and celebrate in others during Founders Day. So now it's my distinct pleasure to present the award in the fac faculty category to Bhavya Rahani. Bhavya was nominated by colleagues William Dillon and Claude Hempel. Claude will tell us a little bit more about Bhavya's uh, uh, accomplishments. My name is Claude Hempel. I'm professor of neurology at UCSF and Chief of Neurology at Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital. And I'm honored to introduce Dr. Bob Urahani for this year's UCSF Chancellor Award for Public Service. I worked with Dr. Rahani at San Francisco General Hospital, and I remember several years ago after one of our weekly neurology and neuroradiology conferences, she pulled me aside to tell me about this program she was starting called Health for the World and asked my advice on how we might improve stroke education through this to providers so they could get the information to their patients for stroke prevention, treatment, and recovery. It's been fantastic to see how this program has developed and made major inroads in various areas of the world. Personally, being able to participate by giving online lectures, having online real-time seminars, and even being in Kathmandu and seeing how neurologists and their trainees were using the app for their patients to improve their care really hit home as what an amazing contribution this has been to the UCSF community and certainly beyond. So please join me in thanking and honoring Dr. Bob Urahani. Now let's just take a moment to hear from Bob Yar herself. Thank you very much. I would like to thank Honorable Chancellor Dr. Sam Horgood for this honor. When I moved to UCSF, I was lucky to find great mentors and colleagues. I would like to thank Dr. Bill Dillon, who's the Executive Vice Chair of Radiology and co-founder of Health of the World for the nomination and being the driving force for this important work. I would like to thank Dr. Dan Lowenstein, who has been an inspiring mentor at every step. Dr. Elton F. Lerntus Affleck for her wonderful mentorship and Dr. Heidi DeFalk for his guidance in global health, Dr. Claude Hemphill for his incredible support to this work and nomination. I'm also thankful to many mentors at UCSF, like Dr. Mark Wilson and those from outside UCSF, 
who have encouraged me and have graciously joined today. This work would not have been possible without support from my family, my parents, my sister, my husband, and my 20-month-old daughter, Tara, who is watching this right now. Health for the World is a nonprofit initiative which we created four years ago in honor of my grandfather. He and my parents taught me the principle of seva. He used to say, do good for others in all ways possible without expecting anything in return. I can still hear those words. He lived in a small village in India without any health access. Years later, Health for the World is helping doctors and patients in low resource communities in 80 countries. In this journey, I have been touched by the goodness on the earth, and this is a completely volunteer driven global movement. Doctors, nurses, software engineers, and people with other diverse backgrounds globally united to create free of cost educational and technological solutions to promote health in corners of earth. As we fight this planet together, we are all united by spirit of humanity and are a part of a large global family. Helping people in need with all the compassion in our hearts is even more important in these times. I would like to end by reading a quotation from Nelson Mandela, which I read to my daughter. We can change the world and make it a better place. It's in our hands to make a difference. Thank you very much for this great honor. Thank you, Bhavya, and congratulations again. Please give your daughter a big hug from all of us. And I'm now pleased to announce the Chancellor's Award for Public Service in the Staff category. This year, it goes to Priya Shankar. Jason Nagata will tell us why Priya was nominated. Jason. My name is Jason Nagata and I am an assistant professor of pediatrics in the Division of Adolescent and Young Adult Medicine. I'm honored to introduce Dr. Priya Shankar, a resident physician in the Pediatric Leaders Advancing Health Equity Program for this year's Chancellor's Award for Public Service. Dr. Shankar has an incomparable passion to promote adolescent health globally. Through Adolescent Health Champions, a nonprofit that she co-founded, co Dr. Shankar has trained 750 youth champions and educated 4,000 youth in 15 low-income schools in Mumbai, India, and published findings demonstrating increased health knowledge among these adolescents in the Annals of Global Health. Post-residency, Dr. Shankar will be pursuing an NIH Bogarty Global Health Fellowship and launching a government partnership in India to expand her nonprofit to 100 schools and reach 30,000 youth. For her amazing advocacy for underserved adolescents globally, please join me in congratulating Dr. Shankar for receiving this year's Chancellor's Award for Public Service. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Priya, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much to the awards committee and the Chancellor honor. Um, first, it's really deeply humbling to be surrounded by such incredible leaders. I'm a pediatric resident in my final month of training at UCSS Pediatric Leaders Advancing Health Equity, the PLUS residency program. I developed my passion for public service from my mother, a physician who led our family as a single parent, and my grandmother, a teacher who at 88 years old is still working with students to this day. Both of them instilled in me a passion for health and education and showed me the power of female leadership in our matriarchal home. In 2016, I co-founded Girls Health Champions, a nonprofit organization addressing deeply entrenched gender inequality and poor adolescent health outcomes in India. India has the largest number of adolescent girls in the world, and our organization trains youth as health educators in their schools and in their communities to change attitudes and provide health support. In these years, I've watched our champions bravely volunteer to lead discussions in their classrooms on topics ranging from mental health, gender-based violence, and sexual and reproductive health. To date, GHC, as we call it, has now reached 4,000 young people in India, and later this year, as Dr. Nagata mentioned, will reach 30,000 youth in partnership with the government in India. There are a number of people who've been lights in my, journeys of ad, in, in my journey of advocacy. First, our champions, our peer educators who are fearless leaders. My family and my husband, Ricky Sharma, who's demonstrated the importance of male leadership and engagement in gender inequality. The Department of Pediatrics, Dr. Nagata, who's done outstanding work in the field of global adolescent health, 
Dr. Sohil Sud, who's helped remind me to keep our organization youth and community centered. Dr. Fukwe, who's a fierce advocate for global health equity. Also the PLUS program, including Dr. Marvin, McNamara, Whittle, and Quo are just a few of the many people who have deeply influenced my philosophy of leadership and reminded me to be brave, speak up, and even protest if it is necessary. Over the years, I've learned that public service and leadership is much less about leading others and more about leading with and in solidarity with communities. I hope to be a small yet forceful part of that change for marginalized populations of youth for years to come. Thank you all again and onwards as we must do much, much more to address the intersectional and systemic health inequalities that continue to impact our youth globally. Thank you. Congratulations, Priya, and thank you for your extraordinary work. I now have the pleasure of announcing two additional recipients of special public service awards. The first is the Thomas N. Burbridge Public Service Award. This award was established in honor of Dr. Thomas Burbridge, who was a professor of pharmacology and is best remembered for his efforts to promote equal education and employment opportunities, civil rights, and social justice. I'm very happy this year to bestow this award to Margot Cushell. Let's hear about Margot's accomplishment from Dr. Robert Wachter. Oh. Hi, I'm Bob Wachter. I'm chair of the UCSF Department of Medicine. I wanted to pass along my warmest congratulations to Dr. Margot Cushell, the winner of this year's Thomas Burbridge Public Service Award. I'm privileged to lead the Department of Medicine at UCSF, which has 800 outstanding faculty members, but I can't think of anyone whose work I admire more than Margot Cushell. Margot, you combine passion and commitment with pragmatism and effectiveness. And the result is work that is both inspiring and extraordinarily useful to clinicians and to policymakers. As the COVID-19 pandemic has proceeded, and we've all learned rather unsurprisingly that it hits underserved populations with a particular vengeance, your work continues to help us appreciate these inequities and more importantly, to take action. Margaret, congratulations on winning this well-deserved award. I look forward to continuing to learn from you and admiring your many, many contributions. Thanks very much. Thank you, Bob. Now, Margo, we'd love to hear a little bit from you. Chancellor Hogwood and Bob, thank you so much for this award. I'm really humbled. I can think of no greater honor than an award in Dr. Thomas Burbridge's name, whose lifelong work to promote civil rights, social justice, and racial equity serves as both a shining example and a call to action. It's been a deep privilege to work at UCSF and at San Francisco General Hospital. This month, as I complete 25 years of work here, I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to work besides colleagues who are so deeply committed to social and racial justice. It's also been such a great joy to serve the patients at San Francisco General to work alongside people experiencing homelessness as partners together in our re research and to work alongside and learn from all the communities that we serve. Their resilience, generosity, and grace under deeply unjust circumstances serves as an inspiration and a reminder of the unbearable human toll of injustice. UCSF's commitment to advancing health equity has made it the ideal professional home for me. After 25 years of working here, I still wake up every day and can't quite believe my luck. The COVID pandemic has made clear to many what we've always known, that the racism upon which this country is built is one of our greatest threats to health. The shocking disparities of COVID outcomes by race has heightened people's awareness of the reality of racial inequities of health in this country. While people often say that the zip code that one lives in determines one health more than one's genetic code, Dr. Gabriella Alcotti reminded us in an essay in Health Affairs recently, and others have pointed out that one zip code in this country is merely a proxy for race. And that proxy is a direct result of racist policies and practices that led to racial segregation. She called on us to be clear in our language that zip codes don't kill people, racism does. And to quote my beloved colleague, Dr. Kirsten Spibben Domingo in her stirring recent piece in the Annals of Internal Medicine, we simply cannot afford to bear witness to yet another manifestation of health inequities. This time must be different. To honor Dr. Burbage's legacy, we need to use our voices and our privilege to speak out against inequities and to ensure that indeed this time must be different. 
as I accept this word, I redouble my commitment to do all that I can to make this so. Finally, I do need to thank my amazing family for their unwavering support um, of me over the years. Without their love, support, and patience, I really couldn't have done this work. Thank you so much for this honor. Congratulations again, Margot, and thank you for those uh, powerful words. This year, I also have the pleasure of announcing the Edison T. Uno Public Service Award. Edison T. Uno was Assistant Dean of Students at UCSF from 1969 to 1974. He was a participant and leader in a number of social and political causes and organizations. Most notably, Dr. Uno was involved in the struggle to repeal the law that permitted the incarceration of Japanese Americans in detention camps. This award was established in recognition of his tireless dedication and personal, social, political, and civic groups that brought about tremendous social change. I'm happy to bestow this year's UNO Award to Rupa Maria. Rupa was nominated by Deborah Cohen and Madhavi Dandu. Let's hear about Rupa's accomplishment from Madhavi now. It is my immense pleasure to introduce Dr. Rupa Maria as this year's recipient of the Edison T. Uno Public Service Award. I've had the pleasure of training with and working with Dr. Maria for the last 18 years. She embodies bedside compassion and empathy and provides the highest possible quality of care. But what separates Dr. Maria is her tireless work as an advocate. In order to treat and promote the health of those she cares for, she has committed herself to serving those patients by using her voice, her deeds, and resources to dismantle the destructive structures that make us sick or keep us unhealthy. That commitment has taken the form of the deepest type of service, and she's worked at many different levels, including the hospital level, at the community level, the government level, and at policy levels, as a volunteer to advocate and make change. All of this service has been steeped in a, the truest form of humility. She makes decisions on where to serve and what to do based on the voices of the people that are affected. And I think this is most evidenced by the fact that she has been invited by many communities to be an ally, an advocate, and an activist. In these times, I think it is even more clear that our role as health professionals has to take place beyond our university setting. Dr. Mario remains a deep inspiration for all of us as we try to advocate for the type of healthy world we want to live in. Congratulations, Rupa. This award is incredibly well-deserved. Thank you, Madhavi. Now let's hear from Rupa herself. Thank you, Chancellor Huggett. Thank you, Madhavi. It is truly an honor to have my work uplifted alongside the legacy of civil rights leader, Dean Edison Uno. Like him, I'm also the child of Asian immigrants. I was born and raised here in Ohlone territory. I offer deep thanks to my ancestors and to the ancestors of this land who have given me safe place to grow up, to practice my medicine, to raise my family and to serve. I offer thanks to my grandparents and to my parents, to my family and my colleagues at UCSF who have witnessed and supported my growth at the intersection of society, art and medicine. It is at this place where I situate my passion, my healing and my service. Dean Uno wrote, an objective interpretation of our history cannot deny the fact that there is a great disparity in the dispensation of justice, liberty, and equality. It is obvious that the laws which govern the application of those principles give a great deal of latitude to those who are rich and powerful as compared to those who are poor and powerless. I couldn't agree more with Dean Uno. We are witnessing today in our own city that there are two public health standards in the midst of a pandemic one for people with houses and another for those who haven't spoken. And this is unconscionable. Diseases caused by social structures such as homelessness require structural change. No amount of work I do in the hospital will change the health outcomes of my unhoused patients when I'm required to send them back to the streets. If we are not actively changing the structures causing harm, we are upholding them. That's like offering a patient with cardiovascular disease a statin with one hand and a cigarette with the other. We must continually work to come into alignment for the most effective healing of our community. 
UCSF is on Ramayatush Ohlone land. For 10,000 years, this land was continuously inhabited by people with a culture of sustaining the health of all beings here. The salmon, the grizzly, the soil, the water, the oak, and the air. So I used a group email that was... Hey, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, sorry. Homelessness um, and hunger were unknown in this land until the arrival of the Europeans. Have, have, how we have structured our world has created more suffering for all entities, and COVID is exposing all of that, with the overwhelming proportion of brown, black, indigenous, and poor people getting sick to showing the slowing of impact of human activity. The air has become cleaner without us, and the coyotes are howling again in, in North Beach. I hope we can bring the values of Ohlone culture more into our work and our mission at UCSF to work together to eradicate harmful social structures so that homelessness and hunger will become again unknown in this land. And the few short hundred years of a culture that cares less will be an aberration from the thousands of years of a culture that cared more. Thank you for this great honor to join this legacy of Dean Edison Uno and so many here at UCSF who have come before me to heal social diseases with the correct diagnoses and the most effective cure, social change. Thank you. Thank you, Rupa, and congratulations again for uh, the wonderful work that you do. Let's now move on to the Award for Exceptional University Management. This award recognizes and rewards outstanding university service amongst those who have the responsibility to supervise, guide, and lead others, as well as support the strategic goals and values of the university. Our first recipient is Clarice Estrada. Let's take a minute to hear about Clarice's work from Brian Black and Dean Shepard. Brian Black and I are thrilled to introduce Clarice Estrada, this year's winner of the Chancellor's Award for Exceptional University Management. Clarice is the most extraordinary manager I've worked with in my 42 years at UCSF. She has boundless energy, is universally upbeat, and has an amazing ability to build effective teams. Clarice relishes challenges and is always looking for creative ways to make everyone else's work and life better. Incredibly, she oversees the work of three completely different units, the Lung Biology Center based at ZSFG, the Pulmonary Division based at Parnassus, and the Cardiovascular Research Institute based at Mission Bay. And she's been able to build very strong communities and teams uh, at each unit that really feel like families. And she's done this in large part because she's so outstanding at identifying the strengths of her team members, communicating her trust to them, and empowering each of us to take on new leadership responsibilities. So Brian and I can't imagine anybody more worthy of this award than Clarice Estrada. Clarice, please accept our heartfelt congratulations for this richly deserved award. Dean and I are both so fortunate to have you as part of our leadership teams and we look forward to working with you for many years to come. So again, congratulations. Thank you, Dean and Brian. Uh, Clarice, now we'd love to hear from you. Thank you, Chancellor Hawgood. I am so honored and humbled to be recognized. Pretty much my first job right out of college was at UCSF 18 years ago. I grew up here and this is where I learned how to be a manager. And while I've worked very hard and learned a lot, the success that I've been generously credited with is because I've been so blessed to be surrounded by so many exceptional colleagues who are not only smart and compassionate, but people who are willing to take risks and experiment to make UCSF in our world a better place. I want to express my deep gratitude to my teams in the Cardiovascular Research Institute and Pulmonary and Lung Biology Center divisions in the Department of Medicine. Because of your expertise and excellence, I am up here today. This award is a reflection and recognition of your extraordinary talent and work ethic. I'm so proud to be part of your team, your partner and advocate. I want to thank my fellow chief administrative officers in the School of Medicine. You have always inspired me to think bigger and advocate harder. And a huge thanks to the group that made the effort and took the time out of their busy schedules to nominate me for this award. Thank you to Maria Novalero and Isaac Sato for the heavy lifting 
and to Drs. Dean Shepard and Brian Black for their unwavering partnership and support through all these years. And finally, to my family, my father Greg, sisters Gemma and Monica, and my husband Jason, and my children, Benjamin and Aubrey, my original and oldest teammates, for their love, advice, and support, which gives me the strength that enables me to do this hard but important work. This place values people, their voices, ideas, and opinions, and so do I. All I've ever wanted to do is to help people, make them feel good and laugh, and there is no greater feeling than when people tell me that I've made their day better by solving problems with creative solutions. These are not easy times and I feel a little strange <laughs> being recognized in the era of COVID-19, but I know we will all get through it. And with the leadership of managers we've been lucky to have here, UCSF will be stronger than before. I couldn't be more proud to be associated with such an amazing institution and colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Clarice, and uh, thank your two children for their uh, star turn there. It was wonderful. Our second recipient is Manura Kanani. Today, it is my distinct pleasure and great honor to introduce Manura Kanani to you. Manura will receive this year's Chancellor Award for Exceptional University Management. I simply want to tell you all that I know about Manura. I first met Manira in 2005 when she interviewed for the position of manager of the Department of Dermatology. I will never forget this event. I did not know it then, but that was my lucky day. We hired Manira and she has managed the department since that time. Things went extraordinarily well for us in the early days of her role as manager, but I learned at that time, that managing one department was simply not enough for Manira's energy and broad bandwidth. So now today, Manira manages five distinct, independent operating units in the School of Medicine. Each of these is managed brilliantly. And each of us with whom she works want to thank her. So, Manira. I speak for Kathy, for Matthias, and for Atul when we thank you for your exceptional role as our managers. Congratulations to you. This award is well-deserved. You are simply the best. Thank you, Bruce. Now, Manira, please, uh, a few words. Thank you, Chancellor Hoggard and Dr. Winthrop for the, for the kind remarks. I really appreciate it. And I want to congratulate my colleagues who are receiving this award today as well. First, let me start by saying I'm truly honored and humbled to receive this award. When I came to this country over 25 years ago, I started my first volunteer position here at UCSF in the emergency department. At that time, I immediately felt that I belonged here. And I knew that that UCSF was the place where I wanted to be and contribute to. There was something special about the place, the level of commitment, the diverse talent, the innovation, the amazing people, and many, many other things. It felt like a second home to me. To this day, I feel fortunate and proud to be working for this amazing institution, especially during these challenging times. Of course, this award would not have been possible without the guidance and mentorship of my boss and chair, Dr. Bruce Winthrop, who I greatly respect and look up to as a leader and a teacher. I'm also grateful to my other chairs and directors, Dr. Catherine Park, Atul Butte, and Matthias Hubrook for all their support. I feel really lucky to be working with amazing faculty, staff, and incredible colleagues. Their support and friendship makes it fun to come to work every day. To my colleagues, I'm looking forward to a real happy hour and not the Zoom one. Finally, I would like to acknowledge my family, husband and two daughters who, are, who will continue to put up with me every day. And again, I thank you for this recognition and looking forward for many productive years at UCSF. Thank you, Manera, and congratulations again. Rafael Hirsch, 
will now introduce Philip O'Brien, our third recipient of the Exceptional University Management Award. Hi, I'm Raphael Hirsch, Chair of the Department of Pediatrics at UCSF. I'm honored to introduce Phil O'Brien for this year's Chancellor Award for Exceptional University Management. Phil serves as Chief Administrative Officer and Associate Chair for Finance and Administration in the Department of Pediatrics. It seems that everyone in the department loves him. Peggy Weeks proposed that we nominate him for this award, and my two predecessors, Kevin Shannon and Donna Ferraro, provided enthusiastic assistance with his nomination. Why do people love Phil so much? Well, we love his intelligence. We love his vast knowledge and expertise. We love his work ethic, which is relentless and tireless. But most of all, we love what's in here. Often with people as talented and ambitious as Phil, it becomes about their ego and their self-interest. We love Phil because for him, it's always about others. It's his trustworthiness, his humility, his belief in other people, his kindness. Phil, that's why we love you. I wanna congratulate you on this well-deserved recognition. And on behalf of the entire Department of Pediatrics, I wanna thank you for all you do. Thank you, Rafi. Now, Phil, please say a few words. Uh, thank you, Chancellor Hoggood and uh, Dr. Hirsch for uh, nominating me for this award. It's a tremendous honor and a privilege for me to have the opportunity to work at UCSF and be recognized this way. Um, I also want to say thanks to the tremendously talented and dedicated group of administrative staff with whom I get to work with every day. Um, I want to say thank you to the division chiefs with whom I get to work with a tremendous, tremendously talented group of people. Um, and I also want to say thanks to uh, Donna Ferrero and Kevin Shannon, the previous prior chairs in the department. Um, I really have enjoyed and appreciated very much their support and mentorship through my time here at UCSF. Uh, I, I worked at UCSF for seven years. Um, and when I first came out for my interview um, seven years ago, I still remember thinking as I walked back to my hotel room, how much the, how impressed I was with the commitment and dedication to the, to the university and to the department. The, the, I found out later, um, you know, the tremendously talented individual contributions that these faculty members had made. Um, and, but you would not have guessed that talking to them, just really, really high quality people. Um, at, a few years ago, the School of Medicine had a leadership development program. We had to interview our chairs. And I asked Donna Ferrero why she had wanted to be chair. And her response was uh, she thought it would give her an opportunity to make a, make a difference in the lives of children. And, you know, that, sorry. <laughs> Um, uh, wow, um, that has stuck with me. Um, it really, uh, really embodies the commitment that the entire department has towards our mission. And I feel very, very fortunate to be able to contribute. So thank you very much. Thank you, Phil, for those uh, heartfelt words. Neil Poe will now introduce Larry Pearson, the fourth and final recipient of the Exceptional University Management Award. Let's hear from Neil. It is my honor to introduce Larry Pearson for the Chancellor's Award for Exceptional University Management. Larry is my Director of Administration in the largest department at ZSFG. 
Starting at UCSF some 25 years ago as an administrative assistant, she has risen to this position of considerable accountability. With laser-like insight, she solves problems. Highly engaged, superbly organized, expertly professional, she brings people together, developing their potential, and is respectful and watchful of people in their environments. Using these talents, she has contributed to many key university-wide committees. I value Lorraine's equanimity and integrity. We can trust her to provide sound advice and to help make the right decision. She knits together principled thinking and empathy, a powerful combination. Quite simply, Lorraine is a totally awesome, engaged problem solver. I congratulate her and express my gratitude for her devotion. Thank you, Neil. Lorraine, the room is yours. Um, thank you, Chancellor Hoggett and Neil. Um, I will forever be videoed in tears, so here we go. Um, I am incredibly humbled and honored to receive this award, and I'd like to say congratulations to my fellow recipients. Since the moment I've learned that um, I have received this award, I've been trying to figure out a way to thank um, the so many people who have helped and inspired me along the way. It's um, an impossible task to do in this short time moment. So forgive me if I don't call out your name, but know that I carry each of you and your wisdom with me daily. A quick shout out to my current um, band of troublemakers and problem solvers, and you all know who you are. Um, I say thank you for challenging me and for making me laugh daily. I've been working at San Francisco General Hospital for almost half of my life. What a joyful honor to serve the heart of the city and in serving the most vulnerable in our city. SFGH feels like home to me. I've been surrounded by amazing staff, faculty, and patients during these years who have taught me so much about social justice, compassion, listening, and leading from the heart. Specifically, I want to thank David Bangsberg and Mike McCune for being strong supporters of me and helping develop my confidence to become the person I am today. We have become family, and this is the greatest gift. Neil, it has been a joy to partner with you these past few years. I could not do this job without your intellectual curiosity and your steady wisdom. Most importantly, Thank you for always compassionately listening to me when I need to come into your office and just let it loose. To my family and my friends, I wish we were together and I look forward to Zoom celebrations over the weekend. And to Kevin, my husband, who is nothing less than a rock of my support, um, who has always encouraged and supported me through long hours, hard work, and the celebrations that have come from all of this with all of our combined efforts. Thank you, and I love you. Mary Oliver wrote, it is a serious thing just to be alive on this fresh morning in this broken world. We're living in challenging times, and yet each day I come to work filled with enthusiasm, gratitude, astonishment, and hope, knowing that we are all in this together to help fix what is broken. Thank you, UCSF and ZSFG. Onward. Thank you, Larry, and congratulations again to all four recipients in the exceptional management uh, category. Now on to the award for exceptional university service. This award was created in 1978 by then Chancellor Francis A. Sui to recognize staff employees in non-supervisory roles who have consistently performed at a level beyond their normal job expectations. Our first recipient is Sarah Delaney, who will be introduced by Dr. Bruce Miller. Bruce. So I, I thought today uh, about uh, what is it uh, about a person who wins an exceptional service award in an environment where everyone is exceptional? Uh, and I think uh, with Sarah, I think there is no doubt. There is a generosity of spirit, 
uh, a vitality, a belief in what she does every day, uh, and a continuous sense of making the world a better place. Uh, Sarah's expertise is uh, the focus on caregivers uh, whose loved one is afflicted by Alzheimer's disease or related conditions. Uh, Sarah brings a dynamism um, and vitality to this uh, role. Uh, she spends hours with uh, caregivers. All of us have watched her walk into the home on the weekend of uh, one of our uh, care caregiver and patient dyads. Uh, to see a demoralized caregiver with no hope for the future. After a few hours of uh, Sarah's love and advice, the caregiver is different, the house is different. This is what Sarah brings to our world. Uh, and I'm so honored to be the uh, nominator of this remarkable woman. Please uh, say a few words to us. Thank you for the privilege of this award. My mother was an early childhood educator and my father was a control room operator in a nuclear power plant. When I was growing up, my dad told me to look around and see what people need and learn to do something useful with your life. So thanks dad, I took your advice. And I've been at the Memory and Aging Center for five years now. And before I came here, I had no idea that such a place existed. As Bruce said, everyone here really is exceptional. And it seems like anything is possible. And that's because everyone works so hard and is so dedicated to the population that we serve. I'm every day learning from the caregivers that I work with and the patients who are Ever evolving and declining, unfortunately. I, one of the greatest gifts of working at the Memory and Aging Center is professional mentorship from working with Kate Poseen, who's a brilliantly articulate and such a passionate advocate for people with dementia, and Jennifer Merrilies, who is just a master clinician, an amazing listener, and who sometimes seems to know me better than I know myself. <laughs> I'd also like to thank the young people that I work with who are so compassionate and brave and who are, will make the world a better place and give me hope. And thanks again for this award. Congratulations, Sarah, and thank you for the wonderful work that you do. Gail Lee will now introduce our next recipient of the Exceptional University Service Award, and that is Paul Frankie. Uh, Gail. I'm honored to introduce Paul Frankie for this year's Chancellor's Award for Exceptional University Service. I've worked with Paul since 2010 when he served on the Climate Change Work Group to ensure integrating sustainability into planning decisions to meet UC's sustainability policy goals. Paul's insight and long-term thinking provides opportunities for increasing energy efficiency, carbon emissions reduction, and green infrastructure across the UCSF's three main campuses. Paul not only provides stewardship and integration of UCSF's assets, but he brings his engineering expertise, his collaborative spirit, and his ability to work across all silos in the best interests of building a resilient UCSF. He's most deserving of this prestigious award. Congratulations, Paul. Thank you, Gail. Uh, Paul, the room is yours. Thank you very much for this recognition. I'd like to thank the people who nominated me, my coworkers, friends and family for all their support over the years. The special work we do at UCSF is what attracted me to come here and challenges all of us to rise to the occasion. What we do here isn't always easy, but it's always worthwhile. I feel privileged to have worked with some amazing people here whose examples have always been an inspiration to me. And I appreciate our, my ability to be able to contribute to our success. Thank you very much for this recognition. Thank you, Paul. Our next recipient of the Exceptional University Service Award is Judy Fuller. And let's hear from Becky Darrow, who will have a few words to say about Judy. I've worked with Judy in the Senior Vice Chancellor's Office for the past 10 years, technically as her manager, but more appropriately as her student, as Judy has generously shared with me her 29 years of expertise. 
Many people contributed to Judy's nomination, and I'd like to give you a few examples of why. First, Judy's service demonstrates integrity and a commitment to safeguarding public trust in UCSF. She does this through her work in policy and presidential delegations of authority, as well as the employee complaint resolution process. Judy is a go-to resource for many leaders and administrators who seek her advice on policy interpretation and practice. I'd like to end by reminding us that Founders Day was established in 1982 by Chancellor Sui, and as such, I thought it appropriate to reach out to a former colleague of Judy's and good friend, Adrian Sui, who gave me this quote. Judy Fuller is the epitome of the service spirit that my father envisioned when he created the Chancellor Award, which is intended to call out the humble employee heroes who make UCSF special. Judy not only does her job, but she gives so much to others in the institution with the service she provides every day. Judy, on behalf of so many, thank you for your exceptional service. Thank you, Becky. Uh, Judy, I'd love to hear a few words. Thank you, Chancellor Hoggood. Thank you, Becky, and everyone else who nominated me. Um, greetings to my dear family and friends and the most amazing UCSF community. I am so honored to be selected for the Chancellor's Award. Um, I have been to Founders Day ceremonies in the past and have been so inspired by all the accomplishments of everyone who's received these awards. I am overwhelmed to be in their company as well as any, everyone who's been nominated. People who know me know that I'm not one drawn to attention. In fact, I am way out of my comfort zone right now. But I couldn't pass up this opportunity to show my gratitude and appreciation for all the kind nominations that were submitted on my behalf. I am grateful to everyone who's influenced my life, showing me the value of giving back and shaping me into the person that I've become to be. My parents immigrated from Hong Kong nearly 60 years ago with four kids in tow, and we had two more join us as we settled into America. Yes, that's six kids total. Not common today, but looking back, it was great fun. You were always part of a crowd. Um, and you get a sense of why my posture in being noticed is so uncomfortable. We were all raised to be respectful and resourceful, working together with limited capital to make life better for us and our future generations. I'm sure that's a very familiar statement and can be applied everywhere. I hope my kids are listening. From the very beginning of my career at UCSF, I've been guided by so many great people who encouraged me and challenged me. I cannot thank them enough for inspiring me. Um, and, and you'll have to forgive me if I, if I cannot name just one, it's everybody that, that my life has ever touched. The excellence is in our DNA and there is just no other standard. Words cannot appropriately show the honor I feel today. Again, I can only humbly say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I hope everyone is safe and healthy. Um, I wanna thank everyone for being my family and my friend and my community. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Our fourth and final recipient of the Exceptional University Service Award is Maria Rina Simone. Let's watch a quick video from Larissa Curie, who will introduce Maria. Hi, I'm Larissa Curie, the Associate Dean for Administration and Finance in the School of Dentistry, and I am honored to introduce Maria Rena Simone for this year's Chancellor's Award for Exceptional University Service. I have the privilege of working with Maria in her role as the Director of Strategic Staffing within the School of Dentistry, and I have been continually in awe of the work that she does to create an excellent and inclusive environment for all of our faculty, staff, and students within the school and within UCSF. 
Since arriving at the School of Dentistry, Maria has focused on improving the culture and creating an equitable and inclusive environment for all members of our community. Maria has worked not just on addressing current issues, but also on creating new policies procedures and trainings to make sure that we're embedding the pride values into the core fabric of the school. Specifically, Maria's outstanding efforts in the arenas of staff development, climate improvement, diversity, equity, and inclusion have been outstanding and deserving of this award. She is leading the way in creating a culture and climate that will lead the School of Dentistry and UCSF into the future we want to see. And I am so proud to nominate her to receive this award. Thank you. Thank you, Larissa. Uh, Maria, the room is yours. Thank you, Chancellor. Uh, I'm honored to receive this award. I'm very grateful for the recognition I have received for my work. But winning this award would not be possible without the support I have received from my dentistry leaders and my colleagues for whom I have the deepest respect. I'm what I called a UCSF product. I started my career at UCSF 15 years ago in the HR field. And since then, I have faced challenges on my way here, but each of them has strengthened me to make me the person and professional I am today. I sincerely thank my current supervisor, Larissa Curie, for all her support and for believing in me. I'm very proud to be part of your team, Larissa. I would also like to mention two of my prior supervisors who were key for my journey at UCSF. HR manager, Bob Gilmore, thank you for your friendship and for helping me moving up in my career and introduce me to dentistry. And Kelly Sheridan, labor and employee relations manager, for whom I learned a lot and who saw my potential. Last but not least, I would like to thank my friends, Carmen, Alicia, Marianne, Lisa, for all your support and advice. My family, my parents, and my husband, Martin, and my two beautiful daughters, Paula and Sofia, for bearing with me when I get home after a long day at work. Thank you again to all, and I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you, Maria, and congratulations to all of our uh, Distinguished Service Award winners. Our final award for today is the Distinguished Nurse Award. This award recognizes outstanding contributions to the care of patients and efforts that foster professional and public awareness of achievements in nursing practice. Jennifer Gantz will introduce this year's recipient, Martha Mayer. Hi, my name is Jennifer Gantz. I am the unit director of the intensive care nursery at Benioff Children's Hospital, San Francisco. And today I have the honor of introducing this year's Distinguished Nurse Award winner, Martha Mayer. Martha has been in our unit since 2002. She started as a new graduate here and um, ever since has worked tirelessly to make sure that our babies are, and their families are ready to go home um, and prepare for discharge. And as you can imagine, for an intensive care nursery baby who may have spent up to their first year of life um, in the hospital with us, preparing families to take that baby home for the first time is a really big endeavor. Martha has worked tirelessly to streamline our processes, to educate all of our nurses. She's created videos. She is um, just dedicated to these babies and their families, and we are so very lucky to have her. So Martha, congratulations. I'm honored to be giving to um, be a part of this award for you, and thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Jennifer. Martha, our paths crossed back in 2002, so it's wonderful to see you receiving this award. Please say a few words. Um, thank you, Chancellor Hoggood, and thank you, Jennifer Gans. I'm, I'm extremely honored and humbled to receive this award. It truly is my passion and my desire for all of our babies to go home safely with parents who feel comfortable and know how to care for their fragile or once fragile babies. I want to thank my husband and my children and my family and my friends for supporting me through my life. I also want to thank UCSF for having the evidence-based fellowship program that empowers nurses and gives them the tools to make a difference 
with everyday issues they see in current health healthcare. I hope this pro this program con continues indefinitely. I want to thank Robin Discard, my EVP coach, and Allison Fairhouse for believing in me and my project. I want to thank Kate Hansen and Ali, um, Valerie Bender for their technical for helping me with the technical sides of things. I want to thank my unit director, Jennifer Gans, and my assistant unit directors, um, Jesse, Laura, Zynthia, and Monica. And a special thank you to Diane Von Baren and Kim Skur. I want to thank Mary Kay's um, Stratagas for believing me in me at the beginning of my career at UCSF. I want to thank Simi um, Singh for making all the binders and thank Mary Shields. I truly want to thank everyone on our discharge committee that we formed about two or three years ago. I never could have done this without you. Um, it takes a village and thank you for all being in my village. Thank you, Martha. And to all of the awardees today, I wish that we could uh, be in person so that you could hear the applause and well wishes, but uh, virtual applause to you all. Uh, congratulations. He said he knew me. Did you hear that? <laughs> so now I want to express my great pride in the work and dedication of each of today's award recipients, along with all of those who were nominated. Your service to UCSF and the broader San Francisco community is truly inspiring. And we have never been, uh, there's never been a more important time for your leadership and commitment. I wanna thank those of you, faculty, staff, and students who took the time to nominate your colleagues and remind us that we need to celebrate all of the great people who make up UCSF. I also want to thank the committees who review these nominations and select the recipients and the invaluable staff support that goes into this process every single year. My heartfelt thanks to all of you who are in our Zoom meeting today. I continue to be inspired by each of you from the frontline workers who have risked their lives each day caring for others, to staff members who have kept our environments clean and safe, to the teams of people who are working tirelessly to plan out how we can safely return to work. I thank each of you and wish you all a safe and wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Thank you all. <laughs>